Good morning, William D. Exley, and welcome to another assembly. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you had a good week last week. I was away last week. Uh, I was in Cornwall with my mum, and I was hoping to do some filming down there so that I could show you something a little bit different than my study view. But unfortunately, by the time I got around to filming, the weather was not very nice. The mist was coming in and I was getting very, very wet as I tried to do some filming. So I thought I will abandon my filming and I'll come back and film for you in my study. So I'm really sorry you've not got a beautiful sea view or the beautiful skies, the beautiful poppy fields that I saw there. Um, they, there is some filming on our service this week um, that will go out on YouTube. So we're in the study. We're filming from here again, which I'm really sorry about. And we're thinking about children in the Bible. Now, do you know, I found lots of boys in the Bible, but I've not found lots of girls in the Bible. Now, women are really important to God. Don't let anybody tell you any different to that, because women are very important to God, as are men and children. Everybody is important to God. But actually, finding stories about young girls has been more difficult. And so we're going to have to widen our age group a little bit. So as we talk about some of the women in the Bible, they may not be children of your age. They may well be teenagers. So think about if you have brothers and sisters that go to Hampton Gardens or to Kings or to Stangrounds. They might be that kind of age. And we often don't know the age of the people. So today we're going to look at Esther. And Esther, the story of Esther is in the Old Testament. Now, the book of Esther is one of the most amazing books of the Bible. I find it an amazing and powerful and challenging story as we hear about Esther's life. And I was thinking, how do I tell you this story in a slightly different way? So we're going to do it slightly in pantomime style. I know it's not Christmas, but we're going to do it slightly in pantomime style today. And so I've got some characters that are going to be the different characters in the story. OK, you're going to have to use your imaginations today. So. My first person is Esther, okay? And I've got Esther there. I don't know if you can see. She's got a candle. And I, that is called the Angel of Hope. I've got that sitting above me on my shelf. So we're going to use this as being Esther, okay? You're going to have to remember all of these. So my second one is Mordecai. And Mordecai I, it was not a mouse in any way, shape or form. But I said, use your imaginations. And Mordecai was the person that looked after Esther. He was Esther's uncle and he cared for her after her parents had died. And so we're going to think about Mordecai. Mordecai was a very good man. And so we're going to think about him being quite holy, quite prayerful and very caring of Esther. But also someone very devoted to God. Now, if we were in a pantomime, they would be the people on the good side that we'd be cheering for. OK, now we have some people on the other side that we might boo for if we were in a pantomime. But of course, God loves everybody, so we're not going to boo at anybody. OK, so my first one and he's a man. So you're going to have to excuse what I've got because this is all I can find in my study. And yes, this is Bo Peep from Toy Story 4. But I've got this because he's got a crook. And that stick is quite important. OK, so we'll come back to that in a minute. So you've got to imagine that this is a man and this is King Xerxes. OK, good spelling on that one. You do really well on the spelling test if you had that one. Um, it's got lots of X's and E's in it. And somebody else in our story. And this is the crab from Shiny. I really love this crab. It makes me laugh and smile. So this is going to be Haman today. All right, this crab, you're really going to have to use imaginations this morning. Fantastic. And there's one other person in this story, and we, we've used this before. And we've used this to be Jesus, but today we're going to use this as being God. Because God is in every story. He's in every story of our lives, and he's in everything that we do. Okay. Now, the really weird thing about the book of, of Esther in the Bible is that the name of God is not mentioned once. There is no other book in the Bible where we can say that. Of all 66 books, this is the only one where we can say that God is not mentioned. That's really weird. But what I love in this story is that God is always there through it and we can tell how he is working. So we've got to think back lots and lots of years ago. Before Jesus, we're in the Old Testament, so we're in the books before Jesus was born. And we're thinking about the story of Esther. OK, now King Xerxes was the king of the day. 
He was a king who quite liked to party and the parties went on for days and sometimes weeks. So he partied an awful lot. King Xerxes had a wife, he was called Vashti. And King Xerxes liked to show off all the possessions that he had. And he liked to show off his wife. So during one of the parties, he asked for his wife to come and be at the party for him essentially to show her off. Not a good thing to do. And so Vashti decided that she wasn't going to come. That was a very bold thing for Queen Vashti to decide that she wasn't going to come. But she decided that she wasn't going to come. And therefore she was banished. So she was thrown out of the king's courts and never seen of and never heard of again. So this means that our king of the day starts looking for a new queen. Now the way they chose their new royal family was not like we choose ours. They weren't married into it. It was a little bit like a contest. And so people would come and show what they had to the king of the day. And they would live in the palace for a, quite a long time. So the king could get to know lots of people and then he would choose his queen. Again, not the greatest process going, but that's how it was. So Esther was the one that was chosen to be queen. And she was queen with King Xerxes. Now again, being queen then didn't mean what it means now. It didn't mean having to go out and do lots of public engagements. It didn't mean having to be a very public face. It meant really being there to support the king. Get my other character as well, sorry. King Xerxes loved Esther very much. Very, very fond of her, really cared for her as well. But sometimes, you know, in our lives, there are people who don't speak good words to us. They don't speak things that affirm us or talk about us, how good we are as a person to try and build us up. Now, in the life of King Xerxes was Haman. Haman was one of the top king advisors of the day, the top advisors to the king, sorry, of the day. And Haman really wanted power. Now, I've chosen my shiny because he's got gold all over his back. Not real gold, I hasten to add, because he just liked collecting things. And Haman wanted power. He wanted all those things that came with being a king. And so he tried and he tried and he tried with King Haman as much as he could to get power and to be liked by him. Because the more a person was liked in those days, the higher they were likely to go. Now Mordecai, our prayerful uncle of Esther, was outside the gates of the palace. He wasn't allowed in there. And Esther would go down from time to time and talk to Mordecai. Now Mordecai loved God more than anything. And he wouldn't follow some of the rules of the kingdom of the day, of the earthly kingdom of King Xerxes. And he wouldn't bow down to King Haman or to, to, not King Haman, to King Xerxes, or to, to Haman at all. And so Haman saw this, and he was not very happy because he wanted everybody in the kingdom to bow down to him. And so he went to the king and he said, I think that we should make a decree that anybody who doesn't bow to you and to your servants should be put to death. Again, not a great twist of the story really, is it? And King Xerxes thought, you know, I quite like this, the plan I quite want to be bowed down to. And so he made this as a decree. The sad thing is that later he made decree against all the Jewish people. Both Mordecai and Esther were Jews. But King Xerxes didn't know that his bride or his queen was a Jew. Now, Esther was probably in the teenage years, as we said. She was a young woman at this point, and she'd taken on this huge responsibility of being the queen. And one day, a message got to her that Mordecai was very, very sad. So Queen Esther goes down to the gates to talk to Mordecai. And Mordecai tells her of this plan that Haman has formed. The plan that will kill all of the Jews. Now they are both so, so sad about this. And Mordecai says to Esther, you are in the palace. You've got something that you can do because you are in that place of authority. 
But the problem is, and this is why I've chosen this character, let's look at this stick, this crook again, is because you couldn't come into the king's presence unless they showed you their staff, their crook. That was a sign that you could come into the king's presence. And so Esther told, told Mordecai to go and tell everybody to pray and to fast. Now fasting is when you go without food for a short period of time and you do that for reasons of religion usually, sometimes health reasons, but you do it for reasons of religion because you want to draw closer to God. And so he was he told them to go and fast. Now fasting has got to be done very carefully and I say only for a very short period of time. So Esther said what they needed to do and then Esther was very brave. Mordecai had said to Esther, perhaps it is for this time that you have been put in the place that you are. And I love this part of the story because sometimes we're put in places. We're put in places where we can help. We're put in situations that might be difficult to challenge us, to see how we're going to respond. And sometimes we're put in places because we have to be bold. Now, I was in Cornwall last week during the G7 summit, and we met some Christian climate protesters down there. And they were so passionate about thinking about caring for our planet. And they've been put in that place to make that noise and to make that kind of calling to people to recognise the damage that's been done to our planet. And so Esther recognised that she's been put into the palace alongside the king for such a time as this. And she says some very brave words. She said, if I perish, I perish. Because she knew that God had called her to do this. And so she very bravely goes into the presence of King Xerxes. And amazingly, King Xerxes shows his, his staff or his crook and he enables Esther to come into his presence. Now Esther doesn't straight away start telling him the story of what he's done wrong and that he's going to kill all the Jews. Esther very cleverly invites Haman and King Xerxes to a banquet. Now Haman is very excited about this because he gets to go and dine with the Queen and the King. And so Esther puts on this amazing banquet to which Haman and Xerxes go to. And nothing really happened that night. And at the end of that night, she said, I would like to do this again for you the next night. Now, King Xerxes starts to realise that something is probably going on at this point and that Esther wants something. And he says, what is it that you want? And Esther says, don't worry, I want you to come back and have another banquet with me. And so the next banquet happens and they come back again. And during this, Esther tells King Xerxes about what he has done, about how he has written a decree, he's written a law, that everyone who is a Jew should be killed. And she reveals that she herself is a Jew. Now King Xerxes is so, so sad at what he's done. He had very, very poor guidance in Haman. Haman only had one thing that he wanted to do. He wanted that power and he wanted to be at the top uh, of what he was doing. And there's nothing that Haman can do, nothing that Xerxes can do at this point. I'm getting confused. Nothing that King Xerxes can do at this point because he's made a royal decree and he stamped it and it's gone out. And so Esther pleads, can she write another letter? Can she write another decree saying that, warning the Jews of what's going to happen, that there is going to be a battle? And King Xerxes agrees to this. And so Esther does this. And the amazing thing in this story is that the Jewish people win their battle. Now, battles are never a good way to, to fight conflict. We've talked about this before. It's not a good way to sort out problems. But this was how a lot of things happened in these days. And again, we're thinking thousands of years ago. And so Esther was put in that place at that time, this young woman, and she was so brave in what she did. She was so bold in going to Haman. And she was so, so bold as well in following a God who is not mentioned in this book of Esther at all. But in this story, we see how God is caring for Esther, how he's allowing Mordecai to tell her things at the right time, and how he's stopping Haman from having his evil plan being won. 
So it's an amazing story and I love the boldness of Queen Esther, but also the humility. And humility is quite a strange word, but humility is often thinking about others before we think about ourselves. There are times we need to think about ourselves, we need to make sure we are safe and well, but sometimes we might need to put the needs of somebody else before us. We can think about Jesus on the cross, he put the needs of people before his own needs. And so I love this story of Esther and who she is. Now that was slightly complicated to follow, I do get that. But I wonder from that story what you have taken, what has stood out to you. We're going to spend a couple of moments in quiet just thinking about this story. Thinking about is there something that you need to be bold in today? Think about which character you identify in. So let's just think about that for a moment and then I will pray. And one of the things I love in this story, there are many things I love in this story, is Mordecai's line of for such a time as this. And we continue to go through a really weird time in our country and in our world. But maybe there's something that we can do. Maybe we can be kind to somebody else. Maybe we could write a letter to somebody. Maybe we could just check that somebody's doing okay. Esther put the needs of other people before herself. And perhaps we go into this week and into this next week. Maybe that's what we can try and do. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this amazing story of Esther. And although you might not be mentioned in it by name, we know that you are working throughout this story and caring for Esther and ensuring that good happens. So we pray today for our class, for our school for our home life, for wherever we are, that we will try and be humble and put the needs of other people before ourselves, that we will care for one another and we will know that you are always working. So we thank you for this amazing story and for the life and witness of Esther. Amen. I'll be back next week with another assembly, probably thinking about a boy this time, I think. Have a great weekend. Have a lovely week until I see you next week again. And God bless. Take care, Will and Dee Axley. Bye.